Ash dieback causes widespread damage to ash trees and in most cases the tree will die off over time. This will lead to twigs and branches falling as they become brittle and fall off through the impact of the disease or secondary infections. So make sure to be very careful when you are assessing or working in ash plantations, especially during windy weather. Over time, the crowns of affected ash trees will diminish and therefore more light reaches the forest floor. This leads to an explosion of scrub such as bramble, making access much more challenging and dangerous as uneven ground, stones and mound drains are much more difficult to see. So make sure to clear this scrub before any felling takes place. As the disease develops, trees become more unstable and therefore more unpredictable and dangerous when felling. This means that the felling of diseased ash trees by chainsaw should only be considered in the early stages of the disease. As this is dangerous work, it should only be carried out by trained and competent operators with appropriate insurance in place. However, the preferred method to fell diseased ash trees is by harvester, especially if the disease is well advanced. When felling, it is important to know the forwarding method so that timber can be presented correctly. Mechanical loading should be the preferred method as lifting the timber logs by hand can cause personal injuries very easily. Logs should be cut to a standard length for ease of safe stacking and transport. This is normally three meters. Stack the logs properly and securely at roadside and up to a safe height. The stacking point should be also be an easy reach for loading for transport. When planning and carrying out forestry operations, you are required by law to fulfill a number of health and safety duties. For instance, you need to have a safety statement in place, setting out the health and safety measures taken to protect workers. This is a written document to minimise risk, injury or ill health for all people working in the forest. So what does this mean for you? If you as landowner are undertaking the work or are directing the work, then you need to prepare this safety statement. If on the other hand, the work is undertaken by a forestry work manager, then he or she is required to prepare the safety statement. In turn, everyone involved must abide by these measures. I hope that it is clear from this short video that timber harvesting operations are high risk activities. The Health and Safety Authority has produced a very useful code of practice for managing safety and health in forestry operations setting out the legal responsibilities for landowners, forestry work managers and contractors. And finally, remember that health and safety guidance is available from Chagas, the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine and the Health and Safety Authority.